Most guitarists start off learning the fretboard by memorizing scales in position and learning how to improvise with those scale patterns. And it oftentimes leads to playing that sounds locked in the same place in the fretboard and just sounds like they're running scales and not really being creative and musical. In this situation, I always recommend practicing the notes on the fretboard one string at a time, and that way it becomes much more easy and intuitive to be able to play all over the guitar fretboard and have musical phrasing to go along with it. And that's just the beginning step in this simple three-step formula to master the guitar fretboard. Step number one is learn the fretboard one string at a time. Step two is learn two string patterns. And then step three is combine them all into one complete picture of the fretboard. In this video, we're gonna go through that simple three-step process together. And I'm gonna show you 13 really cool musical examples to get you started immediately playing all over the guitar fretboard and having tons of fun while you're doing it. Let's get started right now with example number one. In this one, we're creating a super cool kind of bass line by jumping up an octave from G on the third fret to G on the 15th fret and then messing around with some other notes in the eighth note subdivision. Already with the single string approach of playing, we're moving all over the fretboard, doing huge jumps, and you're gonna see this is gonna be a pattern with the rest of the examples in this video. For this next example, let's jump all the way up to the first string to check out this really, really cool solo pattern that you can use in pretty much any style of music, but we're gonna be shredding a little bit on this one. This example is based on a super duper small idea which is just transferred down the neck over and over and creates a really cool musical sequence. This is one of the main advantages of playing and learning on one string at a time. It's really, really easy to take these little tiny patterns and move them across the fretboard and create really solid, cohesive musical phrases. For example, number three, let's take it back down to the fifth string instead, and we're gonna be doing some soloing in the low register. As you can see, this one has a really, really tricky, fast jump all the way from the fifth fret to the 12th fret. So you can approach this a couple different ways. You can either just slide all the way up, or you can try to leap and jump with your fingers and not slide up to that 12th fret but it's gonna be really, really useful to start to get that flexibility and that movement of your hand really quickly from one side of the guitar fretboard to the other. For this next example, we're gonna take it a little bit easier and play a little bit more melodically with some musical phrasing. Let's check it out. In this one, we're using a really, really simple concept of playing simple eighth notes, but putting what we would call a grace note behind one of them. And that grace note is just this extra little embellishment of playing another note really quickly before the actual note that we really want to land on. And it just gives it this extra flair, this extra pizzazz that makes it sound far more interesting than if the grace note was not in there. For this next example, we're gonna check out a really, really cool and useful pattern that you'll be able to move all over the guitar fretboard when you experiment with it and every different string. So as you can see, this one's really simple. We're actually just double picking each one of the notes. And this is actually a great alternate picking exercise as well, because you have to synchronize your hands differently. One of your hands is moving with an eighth note subdivision, and your other hand is moving with a 16th note subdivision. Some of the leaps in this lick are pretty challenging, but again, they make it sound super duper interesting. It's very unpredictable to see where this line is going to go. And last but not least, we have a lick on only the second string of the guitar. Let's check this one out.
So this one is just a really, really cool soloing phrase and it's in a meter of three, four. So it gives a kind of different vibe to some of the other examples, which were all in four, four. It gives this shortened kind of cut off feeling to each one of, of those measures. Now that you've mastered playing on one string at a time, we need to now play on two strings at a time. And for this, we're going to begin with playing on two adjacent strings at a time. So two strings that are located right next to each other. Let's check out this next example, which is going to use the fifth string and the fourth string in one phrase. So as you can see, this approach of playing actually starts to create little mini position patterns that we can move between really quickly. It's not that different from playing on just one string, but now we have some more options for notes that we can play without having to slide up and down every single time we want to play them. Let's check out the next example, which is a really cool lick on the fourth and third strings that has a huge jump in it that's gonna be a little tough. So as you can see, the first two notes in that lick are pretty challenging. We're going from the 12th fret of the third string all the way down to the fifth fret of the fourth string. But if you think about it in the same way that we've been approaching one string at a time so far, it's not that different. It's like sliding from the 12th fret to the fifth fret on a single string, but now we're just switching our mind to the next string over, and it makes us able to play a huge, super wide interval without having to think that much differently. The next example is my personal favorite of the adjacent string licks. So let's check this one out. As you can see, this one uses the same idea from some of the other licks. We're creating a little pattern and moving it downwards, and then we're playing some other really cool stuff and ending with a giant leap. So all the two string licks we've covered so far are both adjacent strings. However, we can actually think in a very, very similar way and create even crazier jumps and leaps in our solos by thinking on two non-adjacent strings. So if we take one string, skip the string next to it, and pick another string, we get two non-adjacent strings, and we can see all of our scale patterns and create licks that way, which sound completely surprising and unpredictable. So this lick, even though it has some big jumps, we're actually not sliding around the fretboard that much. We are moving around it, but a lot of the jumps come from just transitioning between each of those two strings. This is the kind of thing that results from experimenting with just jumping between the two strings over and over. But let's check out the next example, which is going to create more of a pattern between the two non-adjacent strings. So as you can see, that one is super duper nice because it's creating another great melodic sequence. This is a pattern here, and melodic sequences are also patterns. If you can learn how to create these little melodic cells and move them up and down the string, you can create stuff that sounds so cool. And it sounds like you could have composed it beforehand, but you're actually improvising. All right, it's time to finally play across the entire guitar fretboard. Let's go. Whoa, what was that? That was insane. We went all the way from the bottom of the guitar to the top of the guitar in one lick, and it wasn't even that hard to play, actually. By using some of those cool little melodic techniques we saw in the other licks, like the grace notes and creating pattern, we are actually able to move effortlessly from the bottom of the guitar to the top of the guitar. And let's check out one more lick, last but not least, that's gonna move all the way from the top of the guitar down to the bottom of the guitar in no time. Guys, so I don't even know what to tell you. Like, that sounds so cool to me. This one's definitely implementing a lot of techniques. There's a little bit of sweeping in there and there's some huge fret jumps 
And if you look, there's definitely gonna be a little bit of those position patterns worked in there as well. But fundamentally, it's based on the thinking of one string at a time and being aware of all those notes on the guitar fretboard. And even after this video, if this is something you struggle with a little bit, then make sure you head on over to jamsville.com and pick up the Jamsville GPS fretboard fundamentals course. This is gonna show you all the best ways to visualize the fretboard so that you can come up with licks and improvise licks on top of that, just like this on your own and be creative and express yourself in your music. All the tabs and backing tracks that I use in this video are gonna be available on Patreon, so make sure you go check that out. It's an incredible value for you. And get even more really cool patterns to use in your solos with the free ebook, 10 Essential Improvisation Patterns, available on jamsville.com. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here, which YouTube says you need to watch right now. And I will see you in that video. Until next time, Listen, learn, and jam.